Hello and welcome to Why Should You Choose This Volkswagen Tiggo. Not Tiago, definitely Tiggo. I'm Mark, hope you're doing great. Let's do it. Alright then, what do you need to know? Well, apart from how to pronounce the name, you need to know that this is a five-seat car that's on the smaller side and styled vaguely to resemble both an SUV and a coupe. The latter bit because, as you can see, the roof is a bit slanty. It is, however, the smallest of this type of car. They're usually much bigger and more expensive. Still, it's just about family-sized, but still small enough to be able to park easily kind of like a tall, fat VW Polo. And if you're wondering where exactly it fits into the veritable cavalcade of currently available Volkswagen SUVs, it's here. Bit more expensive than a T-Cross, but a bit cheaper, a bit smaller than a T-Rock. So, kind of entry level then, and because of that, this is not a complicated car. Simple trim range, simple engine range, only petrol engines in fact. No diesel, no hybrid, no full electric. But actually, that means it's cost effective, both to get into and to run. Every version hovers around the 50 miles per gallon mark. So basically, what you're looking at here is a chunky runabout with decent cabin space, a family sized boot, and a bit of added style to boot. So how practical is it, actually? Well, let's find out. So first, we'll look in the boot, obvious place to start, but then we'll look at how much rubbish you can fit in the nooks and crannies in the car. Right, but what's a thing that you'll want to tell your friends about? I genuinely really like these haptic sliders for the temperature. So if you get a mid-spec car and above, instead of getting little knobs for the temperature and the fan speed, you get these little sliders here. And they're just dead good because they look and feel nice to use, but they work, they're functional, they're good. I like them. Main question then, what's it like to drive? Well, it kind of drives how it looks, in my opinion. It's just nice in a very easy very pleasant very non-offensive sort of a way gets all the basic stuff right all the important stuff it's just spot on driving position it's really adjustable it's dead comfy the seats are kind of flat and comfy you will not have a problem getting comfortable in this car the steering's lightweight and the pedals are spaced out properly so they're no effort to use pragmatic stuff right there's a big wide footrest next to the clutch so when you're sat in the motorway no problem rest easy and if you've got a manual it's really light and it glides through the gate the only particular comfort problem that you might have in this car is if you're one of those people that does this rest your elbow like that which you should never do by the way but this is a bit thin and it's a bit hard it hurts your elbow but much more importantly than that the stuff here makes sense and it's easy to use so this car has the quote lesser infotainment system from the volkswagen group which means it's not the big fancy one that they put in the id3 and in the golf and that but it is a widely held opinion that this system is easier to fathom than that one it's got nice shortcut buttons the menus aren't flashy but they make sense you can find what you're looking for easily so this here is the one litre version and as much as you will enjoy the extra poke of the 1.5 litre this is perfectly good it's really characterful it really suits the car so i say if you can you should get the 110 horsepower one stats on the screen here because it just has that bit of extra torque so it feels a bit more responsive on the accelerator but while we are on that the only problem with this engine is that it does have most of its power it seems in the mid-range which means that you have to push it it doesn't feel like it just goes straight away it kind of spools up if you accelerate hard on this thing kind of sounds throaty it sounds really nice it's that classic three cylinder turbo engine thing but it's really quiet at low revs the other thing is these three cylinder vw engines used to be quite lumpy used to get quite a bit of vibration through them but now perfectly smooth and actually the engine smoothness is a quality that's mimicked in the way that this goes over the road the way it rides and the way it just feels in general that is so the first thing it's got really decent body control it doesn't feel like a big tall lumbering suv that's on really bouncy springs so when you turn a corner you're kind of getting rolled left and right and actually it's pretty good to steer it's better to steer than you think it's going to be given how light the steering is and how tall it is you're perched high so you can see everything around you. Like a big problem with a lot of these coupe SUV things that the rear visibility is terrible because of the way that the back squashed down, but that's not the case here. You'll find this easy to park, easy to get around, 
very pleasant to do long distances in. Job done. So what else could you get that's similar then? The most fun to drive small SUV on sale and actually one of the most fun cars to drive full stop but the Puma is still comfy. It is just absolute greatness from Ford, this thing. The Mocha is just a lovely piece of design inside and out, and it's proper light and easy to drive. The only thing against it is a quite small boot, relatively. The C3 Aircross is the most outright comfy small SUV you can get. It's like driving a sponge, and it's got the most spacious cabin. All good. This is dead easy to recommend, right? It looks nice, it drives nice, it's comfy, and it's almost big enough to be a main family car. In fact, I think it is. I would use it as my family car. Doesn't have much character, but that's an abstract concept, isn't it? That's just my view. You might completely disagree. So, well done, Volkswagen.